President Dr. Mohamed Ifern Ali revised the government's plan to offer every adult in Guyana a one-off cash grant of $100,000. In 2015, ExxonMobil made a significant oil discovery off of the shore of Guyana. As a result of this finding, Guyana now has more oil reserves per capita than any other country in the world, almost three times as much as Saudi Arabia. But here's the thing about it. The Arabians or the Middle Easterners own the oil of Saudi Arabia. The Arabians and the Middle Easterners is not a mixture of people such as Indians, Africans, Arabians, and so forth. This is solely Arabians. They own this. While in Guyana, the oil was founded by ExxonMobil, which is an American company. The founder of ExxonMobil is Rockefeller. And so the business, the ownership of the business, stays in the hands of those people. So it is not like the Guyanese people own it. And then in Guyana, they already have this mix where you had the Africans there first, but of course, the Europeans will not leave all that land for simply Africans. So they had to add some more people there and they needed people to work the plantation as well since they had to free the Africans from the plantations. So the Indians were brought in. So even though you have the Indians and Africans there who at times work well with each other and they also have their friction with each other, the finding of the oil, even though it's a territory of Guyana, it is managed by the U.S. Oil in Guyana already generates one billion U.S. dollars in revenues annually and will produce up to 7.5 billion by 2040. With only a population of 800,000 people, Guyana is on the path of becoming the fourth largest offshore oil producer in the world. So, as mentioned, President Dr. Mohamed Ifern Ali revised the government's plan to offer every adult in Guyana a one-off cash grant of $100,000. But that $100,000 is in Guyanese currency. The $100,000 is equivalent to $480 US dollars. Yes, $480 US dollars. If I remember correctly, the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis receive some kind of cash each month from their government. I want to say it's about $500. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I'll have to revisit that. Uh, you can take a look into it. But I know that the government of St. Kitts and Nevis gives some money to the citizens and they do not have oil. The president previously had announced that every household would receive $200,000 Guyanese dollars payment but has since changed his policy after meeting with several public members who feared being left out should the $200,000 be given to the head of the household instead of to every adult over the age of 18, which I can understand. But here's the thing. The fact that the government, or the fact that they even consider to give $200,000 to the head of the household further indicates that common sense cannot be learned in school. Nothing against the president, but I believe even a, a child would know that it doesn't make any sense to take $200,000 and give it to the head of the household in the Caribbean. People are gonna get hurt, families are gonna be divided, and some people are gonna be greedy and not share the money appropriately. Some of the feedback provided to the Guyanese government, which led to them changing from handing out $200,000 to now deciding to give $100,000 to every adult over the age of 18, included concerns about internal family conflicts regarding access and distribution to grant. Since the possibility of receiving a grant surfaced, there has been a rush to transfer a utility meter registration and prepare tenancy agreements, all of which is aimed to establish a distinct household among 
other complications. Ali said moving forward that the one-off cash grant will be given to every Ghanaian adult in possession of a valid national identification card and or a Ghanaian passport. This measure is expected to substantially increase the $60 billion previously allocated for the one-off household grant. However, in the interest of fairness and openness and ensuring that the widest possible benefit is given to the Ghanaian population, we, the Ghanaian government that is, believe that handing out the $100,000 to everyone 18 years and older would be the best course of action. I am hoping that the Negroid people, the black people, the African people of Guyana would really take a keen look at this and realize that if we don't pull together, you will always be at the bottom. You'll always be at the bottom because everyone is going to get some type of money, regardless of who they are. So no one is considering your history or what you've been through. They don't care about that. I understand that out of the number of African people living in Guyana, that 90% of them only care about themselves. They just want to get their money and move on. But there are going to be a few, hopefully, that pull their brain together, pull their mind together, and think about the greater good. And think along the lines of wanting to create something for the next generation. Something that is concrete, something that is solid, so that we do not have to always be at the bottom. And the pressure of this is mostly on the men of the Caribbean. We should not give up on that. We should never give up on that. And we should not expect the government to fix it for us because they are not going to. They have to try to be impartial. And their impartiality starts after slavery. They cannot be partial or they cannot be impartial if they have to include our entire history. So their thing is to, hey, let's move forward to where we are at today. And then we can be impartial. And we allow them to slide with that. But... I don't want to say that we are owed because everyone know that we are owed, but I also want to be realistic in saying that they are not going to give us anything and they have very little respect, if any, for our ancestors. They just want to move past that. So we have to keep it together.